what's happening, everybody? Welcome. This is Whistle Kick Martial Arts Radio. And on today's episode, Andrew and I, we've got the 26th. 26th. 26th installment of the question and answer format. If you want to ask a question, you shoot them over to Andrew. Andrew at whistlekick.com. Don't send them to me. I'm not supposed to see them. And we're going to go through those and at least the, the I know, I, one of them, the, the one you asked me, because you're like, have I asked you these questions? How about this one? It's super fun and I'm really excited. And I'm saving it for the last one. Oh, you would do that. Okay. Uh, for those of you out there, if you're new to what we do, we do a whole bunch of stuff for traditional martial arts and traditional martial artists, schools, owners, instructors, students. We're going to talk about some of that stuff today, little bits in between. But bottom line, we're here to help you. If you think traditional martial arts is good for you and others, then you should be checking out all the things we do. Go to whistlekick.com, use the code podcast15, save yourself 15% on something. We're adding new stuff all the time. Check out all the other things that we've got over there. And thank you. All right, Andrew. All right, so I have four questions. Four cues. Uh, so, you know, peeking behind the curtain, as you mentioned earlier, mm -hmm. I was like, oh, shoot, I might have already asked you these. And you said, well, ask me one of them. And so I asked you one. You're like, I would remember that one. It was a good one. It was a good one. And we're going to do that one last. Mm -hmm. So uh, this question comes in from Victor. Hi, Victor. Hi, Victor. Uh, what is your solo training soundtrack? When I'm training solo, it's usually short periods of time, right? And, and we've talked about this on, on the show before that most of my solo training are, you know, bits from 10 seconds to two or three minutes. It's, it's often very, very short, but it's constant, mm -hmm. right? It's closing cabinets with a kick. It's... Can I hit that from here accurately with this kick? No? Okay, let me readjust my foot, right? Mm. Like I'm doing that a lot. Or maybe I just need a mental break and I'm, you know, chewing on application for a certain form. So I'm not usually turning on music while I do it. So the soundtrack is just life. Mm. It could be a TV show that's on in the background or music that's on in the background. Uh, maybe an audiobook. If I'm driving and I'm figuring things out because, you know, I, hey, you know, you can brush, grab, strike your steering wheel. <laughs> and you can, you can steer with it. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, don't do that. You might die. I'm not responsible. Um, it's a good thing you don't teach driver's ed. It is a good thing. A very good thing. I don't know. Oh, uh, but I, I get why he asks this question. I love training with music. And if I am training, not that it happens often, but if I am training for longer durations solo, there's absolutely music on. Most of what I would be listening to in that context would be hip hop. That's most of what I listen to. Mm -hmm. um, you know, the audience can't see, but those binders up there, those are all CDs back from my DJing days. And for the younger audience, CDs are compact discs that had, they were circles that you would put into a player and hit play and music would come out. They're like mini records, but they work with laser. Okay, for the really young audience, record, no, just kidding. <laughs> uh, three quarters of what's up there is, is hip hop, mostly 90s and 2000s. Now, Victor didn't ask this question, but I'm going to, I'm going to kind of add on to it because yeah. I know that you had this. Um, when he, Victor asked about, your soundtrack for your solo training, what was your soundtrack like for competitions? Because mm. I, if memory serves, you had specific stuff you would listen to before you were getting ready for the content. There, there are, and there are still some songs that before I'm going to step out, if I'm going to compete. So right now, um, a hundred to one, it, not, not that I compete often. Mm -hmm. When did I last do that? 2016. If, I, if I'm going to compete or if I'm going to be tested, like if I'm stepping out to a test, mm -hmm. where because for me, the two are roughly the same. I'm going to put on a show, mm -hmm. right? Yeah. Like I want to perform at my best. I want everyone to say there is no doubt that Jeremy is owning, where own, he is. owning the space, you know, mm -hmm. whatever. Um, Run This Town by, it's, it's Jay-Z with, with Kanye and Rihanna. 
And it just, it's just, it's the lyrics, it's the beat, it's everything about that song. When I was younger, it was, there were fewer, there were more options in there. Uh, there was a period of time where the music that I would use uh, for Forms Grands was the Mortal Kombat theme. Sure. Which, by the way, did you know that the Mortal Kombat theme was based on a hymn from Denmark? I did not. Yep, it's a Finnish hymn. Oh, that's cool. Sometimes I hate you. <laughs> Finnish hymn. <laughs> it was so beautifully done. You, you, have, you have this knack for not breaking too early. You had me so well. That was great. So uh, I practiced in high school. We're going to go on a tangent here, guys. Um, <laughs> when I was in high school, I, I, I don't know if I created – I think I created this game, and it's called Ninja Face. And you play it in a group of people, and you don't ever tell anybody you're going to play it. It just happens organically. And you're going to be in a group of people that's laughing or conversing. You could be having five different conversations because you're at a dinner table maybe. And then all it takes is one person to go, Ninja Face, and you have to immediately – your face has to completely deadpan mm. just and be totally silent. And I've gotten really so good. You've practiced. Oh, style. yes. Ninja face and just nothing. Uh, and okay. some people can't do it. They start to. They're like, ninja face, and they'll start to. And then they just burst out laughing because it's funny. Uh, so anyway, yeah, the Mortal Kombat theme. It's a finish him. All right, let's jump back into it. Yeah. So you listen to Mortal Kombat theme. Yeah, and, and you know there are a variety of other things. You know, think think of your your mid nineties rap music. You know, the stuff that you can think of. It was probably that. You know, mm -hmm. it was it was it was Ice Cube. It was House of Pain. It was Tupac. It was you know. Gotcha. Cool. Um, the music landscape has changed quite a bit. Yes. From from then. But I like um, to pretend it has not. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I, I <tried. laughs> I'm open to new music. I just hate almost all of it. That's fine. Um, and some things change, but the base of it will stay the same. Yeah. Much like this dragon hoodie. Mm. You didn't know where I was going. With I did it. not. It, I did not. We Whistlekick are constantly coming out with new stuff. Yeah. Right on our site merchandise um some stuff will stay the same sparring gear yep. stuff like that the dragon hoodie will the ever, will the dragon hoodie ever go away i don't know i didn't expect it to last this long we keep finding new new ways to breathe life into it because people love it yeah if you show up at a whistle kick event now you will see quite a few dragon hoodies it's a lot of fun karen at this last Mar at marshall summit was no joke was counting how many she was going to see throughout the weekend. Yeah, it, there were there were quite a few. And and for those listening, I'm wearing a brand new. Yeah. I just received it yesterday in the mail. Yep, yeah. a brand new dragon hoodie. So it, just a, a brief history on the dragon hoodie. It, it was when we launched in 2021 for free training day Northeast. Yeah, it was two color black and gray. Mm -hmm. And. Then for 2022, we rolled out some different color combinations and even gave people the option to customize their own. We do not do that anymore. That was frustrating. <laughs> I had to keep doing it. Well, can you make the purple a little? No. no a little not, more purple? Not anymore. <laughs> for 2023, we made it a three color where the dragon and the, the whistle kick logo on the back are an additional color. When I was out at Free Training Day Pacific Northwest, was wearing a dragon hoodie as I generally am. As was I. Because it's become the unofficial whistle kick uniform. And Kathy Long remarked on the hoodie. She's like, oh, that's great. And I was like, well, I'll send you one. She's like, oh, that's really cool. And I was like, you want to pick the colors? And she's like, stop. <laughs> it's like, yeah, we'll, we'll figure this out. So fast forward, behind the scenes, Kathy Long and I worked this out. And if you are listening and not watching, it is a black and white 
hoodie. The dragon is blue. And those colors were chosen by Kathy. Now, this one has something that none of our other releases have had, and that's her signature in the hood. I don't know how well we can we can show that. Um, yeah, if you're watching, you can tell like it's there and it's it's written well. She she jotted her signature down for me and sent it over, and we put that in the hood. And what we're doing for for the rest of the month. Which this episode will release on December 21st. Okay, so you, you will still have a little bit of time. Through the end of 2023, 100% of profits from this hoodie will be donated to charity. And there's no there's no gimmick in there, right? I'm not calling myself a charity. Now, we could decide right now. If we, I could release this episode a week early. A week earlier. I could push some stuff around to give people more time to buy that. Their that's up to you. Why don't we do that? Okay. So it'll be a week before the 21st. I'll I'll, I'll okay. do that. For, so, for you, the listening audience, yeah. it'll come out on the 14th. Yeah. Done. So it's it's pretty cool that, you know, we, we set up this partnership. And uh, thank you to Kathy for her graciousness. Absolutely. So in working the three color, black, white, blue. Did you know there is one four color dragon hoodie out there? He's now trying to figure out what the heck are you talking about? This is not a joke. There is one four color dragon hoodie out and about in the world. Is that the one for D? Yep. Yeah. Kind of cool. Just yeah. Yeah. So, um, yeah, there was something. Yeah, we don't even get into that. But anyway, this guy's kind of neat. Anyway. All right. Are you ready for your next question? I'm ready for my next question. This question comes from Jared Wilson. Hi, Jared. And his question is, what non-martial artist would you want to teach martial arts to? I would want it, it would probably be someone who already has an understanding of movement, but in a different way, because I would get to learn while I'm teaching them. Hmm. Interesting. So okay. maybe I'm, we can call it selfish. Wouldn't necessarily need to be a celebrity. Um, maybe like a really high level ballet dancer, mm. somebody who, you know, has incredible proprioception and body control and they can just, all right, I want you to be able, I want you to do this and then this, and I can just talk them through it and they know mm. how to move their body. And I could teach them some really cool advanced stuff right away. Mm. And I think that would be fun. I also think it would be challenging because they would get bored quickly. So I would have to find that fine line. Yeah, you know, yeah that, I could see that. How do I? Yeah. Uh, if I had to pick a second choice, it, it would, let's see, another, another movement discipline. Um, it also depends on what aspect I'm teaching them, right? Because mm. teaching them uh, traditional class stuff versus competition stuff versus, sure. you know, more fitnessy side of stuff. No, nothing else really sounds that interesting. You know, it could be other forms of dance, but, you know, I think ballet probably exemplifies what I'm talking about most. I'm, I'm thinking like very high level gymnast. Like a Niles Wilson, I, I follow him on on yeah. YouTube for for similar reasons. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think it would be really enjoyable. Um, and then, I mean, then you could get into celebrities that you'd be you would want to teach them just because you'd want to hang out with them, right? I mean, yeah. But but that's the more selfish as opposed to. I think that's the more selfish route than going a ballet dancer because they know movement. Yeah, and and you know this is this is I think we can call this the tangent episode. Yeah. I learned very, very early on, because remember, Bill Wallace was episode 14. Mm -hmm. Right? 14? 12. It was one of the two. Almost like we've had 870 episodes and you can't remember them yeah. all. That's pretty early on. I had to learn very, very quickly that if I treated celebrities differently, I did not get them to show up to things. Yeah. Yeah. I when mean, I said, 
you're up here and I'm down here. They had to look down at me mm -hmm. and they were less likely to engage with me on things. Yeah. So now I work really, I've worked really hard, not because I think I'm as good as them or better than them. We're on the same, right? Like it's not about that. It's mm -hmm. that we're here to get something done together. Yeah. Right. Yeah. So, so the idea of, of socializing with celebrities, yeah, that's fun, but like you've probably never seen me take a selfie with a famous person simply because they're a famous person. I'll take it with them if we're friends. Yeah. Like, and it's fun. Like Bill is a perfect example. I, I, I've got great selfies with Bill. <laughs> um, there may or may not. Yeah. I just, I just, I see it. I see it differently. So I don't think that there would be very many people that, that I would want to just hang out with and I would want to teach them. So I could say I taught them. Yeah. Cause you'd be there for a goal. Yeah. For a purpose. Yeah. That'd be about me and not them. And I don't. Yeah. yeah. No, I get it. Um, another example of, you know, having a goal, you know, working towards something and, you know, have, having to be about them and not about you or us would be all in weekend. Yeah. Um, which has become, uh, an, Whistlekick has done a really good job of doing this over here and then doing this over here and doing this over here. Yep. And then we have done a really good job of starting to combine those things. Um, you know, and there are a ton of examples. Um, you know, free training day is a thing. Yep. And the martial art teacher training certification courses are a thing. Yep. And now there have been multiple instances where you can go to a free training day and take one of the Matic courses. Yep. So we're starting to like merge these yeah. things together, different aspects of what we do. Let's chat about that for a little bit. This is the only way I know how to start, how to do a business, mm -hmm. right? Is to do different things. I've never been, it, whether, whether it's a, a personal failing of mine or just difference philosophically, I've never been one who says, let's just do this really tight, narrow thing and be the best in the world at that tight and narrow little thing. And only that. And only that, right? Like, um, we're only going to make pretzels. Okay. All right. I would, I might start making pretzels and then I'm going to make tortilla chips. Yeah. And then I'm going to make all these other things that probably use a number of the same ingredients. Yeah. Right. How many ways can we combine these ingredients and get different things? Then you're going to be making tortilla sh tortilla shells from pretzels. Yes. And that wasn't a joke. Like, you know, like you, that's how you're going to look at converging stuff. Yeah. 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 And so you brought up the example of all in weekend for 2024, for the third instance of all in weekend, we have a leadership track, which if you've been through Matic level one or higher, well, if you've been through higher, you've been through level one, but if you've been, <laughs> been through and passed level one, you're eligible for that track. And so we don't need to go into the specifics of that, but what you're going to start to see from Whistlekick now is we have all the ingredients. We have the various content ingredients. We have the team. We have the events. We have the trainings. We have all of these pieces. Alliance is a good example of how we put these pieces together. Mm. The core four webinars, advertising, uh, peer support and online challenges. None of these are, are dramatic deviations from things that we already do. Yeah. So yeah. it was just, Oh, well, let's put these together in this way. And you could look at that and say, well, you know, that's, that's lame, but what's the difference between a really great loaf of bread and a bad loaf of bread, right? Like just messing up a couple of the ingredients or even yeah. just one. Yeah, if, if you don't get the recipe right, it doesn't work. And so this is, you know, we, we spent, we've spent a decade building the ingredients and the next decade is building the recipes. Awesome. Awesome. Cool. If you want to learn more about the leadership track for all in weekend or all in weekend in general, Everything is at whistlekick.com. All right. You ready for your third question? Ah, uh, ready. Okay. Uh, this one came in this morning, actually, from Josh Blum. Uh, Hi, Josh. And I'm, I'm just going to, I'm going to read it. I'm, I don't want to, I don't, uh, don't want to, not censor is not the right word. I don't want to censor him. That's not the right word. I don't, I don't want to paraphrase what he's going to say. I just want, I'll read you sure. this whole thing. 
In every school, there's usually at least one, the fellow student who is the incessant overcorrector. Mm -hmm. Instead of focusing on their own training, they make it a habit to give unsolicited advice to whomever they work with or happen to observe. Sometimes it's good advice, sometimes not. Harmless, helpful, ignore, feed into it. How much ego feeding does one permit? I'm assuming this question is being asked of the instructor in that dynamic. Yes. That's what's coming across. Yep. So step one, we recognize why that's going on. It is ego, but is ego as defense mechanism. Mm -hmm. That person is doing that because they are unsure of where they are in their own training at that time. They, it is rarely the senior student. It's usually one or two below that. Mm. The person who wants to be the senior student, the person who um, <clears throat> maybe is not often given the responsibility and opportunity of teaching lower ranks, but they want to mm. because they feel like they've worked really hard and they're being unrecognized. Right? So as the instructor, there are a couple things you got to do. One, you got to solve that problem. Yeah. Why do they feel that way? Yeah. Do they feel that way because you don't like them so that you don't give them the opportunities or did they train elsewhere and you know, they're, they feel like they've started over and, and you know, there's something you got to solve that. There's too many options there. But then secondly, much of the time I see, and it sounds like the tone of this question, it's happening at inopportune times. Mm. So maybe it's floor drills and they catch, hey, hey, fix your back foot. The, if it is a lower rank, when that's happening, mm -hmm. I'll say, hey, don't worry about it. My job's to worry about all of you. Your job's to worry about yourself. Mm -hmm. If it's a higher rank, I can't quite do that. Yeah. If it's a higher rank, it's, it's in the ear. It's, hey, I, got it. I appreciate you trying to help, but yeah. like, let, let me do this. But what we're hearing is that this is a consistent problem. I've probably already done that. Mm. Mm -hmm. And it's going to take a, a, a sit down. Yeah. I don't like that happening in most environments because there's a, a good chance that the student is missing something, right? Like, why is that student doing that? Mm. Here's a great example. I once had someone, I, I was having some knee issues. It was the very beginning of my knee issues in college. I was training in a, uh, basically a Shotokan karate derivative, long, deep stances. And I was not able to keep my knee where in that style it should be. Mm -hmm. And the assist, and I, I went to the instructor and I said, Hey, before class, I've got some stuff going on with my knee. Just want you to know. And she's like, totally fine. I get it. Makes sense. Assistant instructor comes over, kicks the back of my knee, mm. which is a perfectly acceptable thing if you don't have problems with your knee. Yep. And I looked at him and I said, I have knee problems. I told sensei so and so. Went, oh, I didn't know. It was my last class mm. because I could no longer trust them to communicate. And mm -hmm. they're, they assumed the worst of me. Yep. Right. Yep. Interesting. Now, as you get better, as you know more, as you have a better understanding of your students, you collect knowledge about them and how they need to be corrected. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. If you have someone who is making those corrections, they have less of that information. They probably have less time instructing. They have less context. They are less able to help. They are, it is possible that they are harming. So I'm, I'm really going to sit them down and, and, hopefully help them understand. And if I can't get them to understand, it's going to be, then you need to trust me. Mm. My responsibility at the front of the room is to guide everyone in their journey. And every aspect of energy and time that you invest in someone else's training, when I have not asked you to, is compromising your own training. Yeah. I mean, that makes sense. And that, collecting of information is what you need, right? To figure out what the right course of action is. Um, I, I totally get it. It's a, it's a difficult job to guide the educational process of 10, 20, 50, 200 yeah, individuals, yeah. 
especially in environments where you have, well, in, in every environment, whether you're, you know, it's a teen advanced class or, you know, you know, like my school, your school, where you've got a variety of ages and, and ranks on the floor. It's all, there's always that disparity. It's always complicated. And to add in the complication of now everybody has the opportunity to correct everybody else. Cause yeah, if you let it go, everybody thinks it's their responsibility and, or their right to do so. Mm. What I think is better is, is creating a culture where people are <clears throat> modeling good behavior and everyone is understands that observing what everyone else is doing and trying to correlate how they all look versus they versus they themselves, I think is a, a healthier way to, to do it. Yep. Um, and you know, you collect that information and you make decisions based on that, which is what we did with quick hits. You're doing a great job with these segues, man. So if you go back, um, as of this recording, it was maybe a month ago that the last quick hit aired. Quick hits were our way of putting out information that was a little more timely. Hey, in two weeks, this thing is going on. Because if you notice, we don't do that with our episodes. We create what we call evergreen content. It is meant to be as relevant now as 10 years into the future. With rare exceptions. With rare exceptions. Yeah. You know, sometimes if we launch a thing, mm -hmm. you know, it's we launch this thing, but we're talking about the thing and the origin of the thing. And we're trying to yeah. give context. Yeah. And so we work really hard for that because we want to make sure that as much of what we produce is as valuable for as long as possible to as many people. Yeah. And, it, and is as relevant as it could be. Yeah, sure. And the quick hits were an effort to use our reach to our audience for things that did not fit that. What we have found over time is that not only are fewer people listening to the quick hits because they were only in audio format, but it seemed like it was having a negative impact on the show overall mm. and run that occurrence through our mantra, connect, educate, and entertain. If fewer people are connected, educated, and entertained, but they are the ones that are, are more connected, educated, and entertained. Does that fit our model? No, because we're trying to grow, right? We're yeah. trying to reach as many people as possible. And there comes a point where, yeah, diluting a little bit of what we do so it reaches more people makes more sense. If we go back to our example before about recipe, right? I really like spicy food. I really don't. If I make a dish that's really, really spicy and you don't enjoy it, only one of us enjoys it. But if I make it less spicy, now we can both enjoy it. Do I enjoy it necessarily as much as I would if it was spicier? No. Mm. But I'll compromise a little bit of my enjoyment for you to also receive some enjoyment. Yeah. Uh, it's much the same philosophy with jokes and pranks. Like if it's not fun for everyone, it's not fun at all. Right. So no, I get it. So that's where we're at. Uh, what might happen in the future is we may drop quick hits once in a while if there's something that seems to make sense we would use it in the same way we might do like an email newsletter just to reach some of you uh but what had happened is we were running two a week and I, it was about things that i really wanted people to to hear and yeah we were repeating them i was plugging them in like commercials we were using it like commercial time and now i know that's not what you all want so they're gone they're gone see we listen to you even when you don't speak <laughs> All right. The last question you've been waiting the whole episode for comes in from, unsurprisingly, Mark Warner. And the question is, as a martial artist, which zombie apocalypse are you most looking forward to? So I'm not looking forward to any of the zombie apocalypses. That would be the plural of apocalypse, right? Apocalypse. Apocalypses. Apocalypses. I don't know. You're not looking forward to any zombie yeah, apocalypse. Yeah, none of none of them, um, because none of them will will go well. Uh, I'm less interested in the 28 Days Later version, mm. which unfortunately is the I believe the more likely version. Right. So if we take a look at zombies overall, and then I'll explain you why, and then I will find a way to answer the question in, a, in an interesting way. 
you've got slow zombies and fast zombies. Yep. Right? Those are really the ways. Now, if you take the Walking Dead version of zombies, physiologically impossible. It, it, is, it is logically impossible for that to occur because in order for limbs to move, calories have to be burned. There has to be a metabolic process. Unless there is some weird virus that has learned to metabolize air and turn it into calories, it could happen. It's, it, it's not going to work. But that <laughs> that also means that that virus would have evolved a better way to to spread than to inhabiting bodies. Right? We we could nitpick that. So the slow way, where um, I think is less likely. Now, twenty eight days later, where essentially people are still alive and some of the functions of the body are suppressed, others are exaggerated to create faster movement, aggression, violence. <clears throat> That's the way it would happen if it's going to happen. I don't want that to happen. Now, what about the I zombie zombie? Where they're just regular living among us and just doing jobs and watch the first few seasons, but it was a, it was a good show. Uh, I don't see that as being logical. It, it doesn't seem to add up with the biology. Okay, just curious. Um, now, of the various forms. Mm -hmm. As a martial artist, which would I be most excited for if I had to be excited for one of them? It would be the slow ones because I would have a better chance of surviving. Yep. And if we take, you know, more or less slow uh, viruses transmitted through blood and or saliva, mm -hmm. we have some of us with some of our skill sets have some options with you know sweeps and leg kicks and, yep. and and avoidance that would work better that's another thing that i don't like about uh, um the walking dead zombies is that somehow getting the blood when they stab one of them mm -hmm. in their eye doesn't train doesn't do it yeah, but, yeah. but saliva does right like it just it, there, there are too many there are too many holes in that <laughs> but if i had to mess with the the fast ones, I would want a spear. In fact, a spear is pro is, is like the zombie survival weapon mm. because it's, you know, it gives you range. It allows you to pierce, uh, assuming that, that stabbing the brain is where you need to go for defense. Yeah. Yeah. I would go slow zombies too, because they would be easier to defend yourself. Yeah. Not easy. No. Because they're zombies. I mean, come on. Right, but easier. Also, I, I just I just want to make sure we're all on the same page. If we end up in a world where there are zombies, if you're watching this and there are zombies, if you are watching this and there are zombies, you should probably turn this off now <laughs> because you have other things that are more important. But if we end up in a world with zombies, it is everyone's collective effort to stop the spread of the zombie virus. Mm -hmm. That if you are, I have to avoid. And yeah, that's job one. But if we are not all on the same page, then it just continues to grow and humanity goes to pot mm -hmm. yeah. and we're all screwed. Right? Leaving more zombies out there to join a horde of zombies is irresponsible. And you should not do that. Yeah. I would agree. Come together. Yeah. Right now. <laughs> over zombies. All right. There we go. That was fun. That was fun. Thanks, Mark. Thanks, Mark. <laughs> Thank you to all of you out there for watching or listening. If you have questions, again, send them to Andrew. Andrew at whistlekick.com. If you've got comments or feedback for me, stuff you want to talk about, Jeremy at whistlekick.com. I will write you back. Unless it's a unless you're mean. If you're mean, I won't write you back. Once in a while I get something mean, but it's pretty rare. If you want to engage with this or any of the other content that we do, we're all over the place. Go to whistlekick.com, see all the places that we are. And while you're over there, pick something up or sign up for something or tell somebody about something. Help us continue to do what we are doing. We appreciate you, Andrew. I appreciate you. 
That's all for now. Until next time, train, train hard, hard, smile, and have, have a great, great day. day. High five! That was a good high five. That was good. Rapid fire. It's recording. Oh, we are? Yeah. Q. <laughs> I can't stop in the middle. Q and A. 26. It will It will be episode 877. Great. Okay. Now that, oh wait, why I can't draw my phone? I need it. Good questions on it. All right. Autofocus is good. Okay. okay. We're good.